Kia ora, welcome to Central News for Wednesday the 9th of July. I'm Hilary Entwistle. Te Aroha was battered by strong winds last night and strong wind warnings remain in place for the area throughout today and tonight. The Te Aroha Volunteer Fire Brigade have attended over 35 calls since 10pm last night for wind-related incidents, including roofs off houses and garages on, and fallen trees. Two houses have been evacuated due to storm damage and the Te Aroha Hospital relocated residents within the hospital. Matamasa Piako District Council and Civil Defence is asking for people to please report fallen trees on public land, surface flooding, slips or road closures to council on 0800 746 467 any time, day or night. A general lack of interest and faith in politicians is being credited for younger generations failing to vote, something Bay Plenty Polytechnic staff and students are working at turning around. The Polytechnic Student Experience Coordinator Kirsten Crossan is working at rectifying the voting decline by encouraging political debate at the Polytechnic, inviting all local parties and candidates. Kirsten says she has been surprised by the amount of politicians wanting to take part in their forum. Yeah, I've been absolutely blown away. I've pretty much had a 100% response um, so saying yes from all local parties um, and even some delegates coming from Wellington. So yeah, really, really surprised. Racing is underway at the European Championships for the Olympic 49er and 49er FX skiffs in Helsinki and the Olympic Nakra 17 multi-hull in La Grande Motte. Tauranga sailor Peter Burling and Blair Touke sailed three races on the opening day in Helsinki in 7 to 12 knot conditions on the courses for the men's racing. Points are predictably close through the leaders at this early stage in the six-day regatta and the New Zealanders can be grateful. They're not one of a number of crews suffering boat damage after coming in contact with a rock on the bottom of Helsinki. Two men will appear in court later this month after Eastern Fish and Game staff and police caught them pillaging trout from a spawning stream near Rotorua over the weekend. An ongoing surveillance operation culminated in the two Eastern Bay residents being caught with 29 trout poached in the isolated stream near Lake Rotuiti. More than half of the freshly killed trout were mature spawning females, with wild fish making up the majority of the haul. It is one of the worst cases of poaching recorded in the area for the best part of a decade. A former Royal New Zealand Navy officer will take up the position as Bay of Plenty Regional Harbour Master from Friday, a position vacant since last December. In a statement released today, Bay Plenty Regional Council announced Peter Buell will begin the role at the end of the week, replacing predecessor Carl Magazinovic, who resigned in December. Bay Plenty Regional Council Deputy Chief Executive Eddie Grogan says Peter's highly recommended, uh, highly commended maritime career was shaped in both the Royal New Zealand Navy and Canadian Armed Forces between 1982 and 2006. Now for our marine forecast, Raglan West Coast, there is a gale warning again in force for tonight and possibly tomorrow, so please check metservice.co.nz to find out more. High tide in Raglan is at 7.47am. East Coast Bay of Plenty, easterly 20 knots, but 35 knots gusting to 45 knots west of Mortiti Island. See very rough in the west. Cloudy, poor visibility in periods of rain in the west. High tide in Tauranga is at 5.09pm. Just ahead, the stages of water in our lives at field days. Welcome to Central News on TV Central. The University of Waikato stand at the recent field days was a sight to see. I caught up with the designer who explained the process of design. Oh, basically, um, actually it comes to me as a surprise when I was asked to join in on board with the uh, ideation. And um, basically I'm not really involved at that stage I was in. And then someone suggests that uh, since we are by the river, and the river is a source of life, and 
we should use that idea. I said, okay. Then they asked about how, what was my experience and all that. I shared it and they said, okay, so can you tell us how will you do it? I said, that, well, since this is a university, so the, the, the idea of rivers or water coming to the university as a knowledge and going out again as a channel. So I actually designed it as in there's water coming in to a point and ripple out as our student gradually graduate out from the university and to anywhere in the world. And they somehow liked the idea and they said, oh, that's good. Can you visualize it for us, the next meeting we have? So I came back and did some you know, 3D and 3D modeling and sent it to them. They said, we like it. Can you work on this? I said, okay. That's how things started, actually. Was it a bit of a challenge trying to combine uh, an agriculture issue into a creative format? Well, um, as you know, I'm a, by trade, I'm a graphic designer. So everything to us is a problem. You know, there's, we, there's no boundary for graphic design. You say it, although you say it's an agriculture thing, to us, even if it's a, 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 a atomic site, atomic theme thing, we have to find a solution to it. So um, it's not a problem. It's, it's more about getting in that research of how would the client want us to portray this in their point of view, and how are we going to relate this message to the audience. This is, this is actually more to the channel between the communication, how you want the message to be translated to the bigger audience. Yeah. The stand focused on uh, different stages water has in our lives. So how did you show that? So the first thing is, so once we have the, um, the stands design and sh showing water pouring in and to the ripper ripping out. So with that, um, we come up with the ideas of, can we have monitors or screens that showing things? I would say, then I would say, yes, of course, because since it's water, so it's a different channel of water coming to the reaper. So I actually come up with two ways of abstract, of, of um, how would say, uh, video, videoing the whole process. It's firstly, I use basic shapes. So because I, I, I didn't understand that few days is not just for adults, there are kids there. So in order to communicate with kids, you cannot show them things that is too um, ambiguous. You have to be something that they are familiar with. So I actually use the shape square to represent different stages of things. So if a bigger square, uh, is it mean it's a, a long time ago, a smaller square will be a recent thing, and different shades of blues. So in, you know that ice is white, and then dark ocean water is in a darker blue. So in, so in, in between, there will be a lighter blue that symbolizes rivers and all the streams. So with that, I actually get my student, and we come with, with different ideas of doing transition using squares. So we have waters, squares representing waters flowing from the top to the bottom that symbolize waterfall and water dropping, dripping, that's like tap water that we drink every day and water flowing in gush, that's like ocean waves and rivers going through. So in between that videos, we have six different transitions and then in between that, we have showing different steps of videos of waters. So we have a wave coming in and then that will accompany wave, a dropping effect from the squares and then the next thing you will anticipate water dripping and then the next thing, you, in, you will see another one that is the squares pushing up. Then you see gush of waters coming out from Gazer and all that. So with that, we have six um, transitions and six different themes for the video. And in between that, it, and it will just loop itself. And we also plan it in a way that if you see it as a whole, they don't just play it. No, they don't just play it. They, they actually animate themselves. From one, they will delay and through that. And everyone tells a story of water coming in, water going out, water move from left to right, water in rising, water decreasing. Yeah. You are a computer graphic designer and I mean this industry has had quite an increase in popularity over the last kind of couple decades. How has that affected you in your career? I don't think that has really affected me as a graphic designer because after all I'm now in a Wakato University, I'm an educator now, um, as in I'll get more people wanting to understand what's the philosophy behind my ideas. I have a lot of works that has been published. So they would like to know, how do you actually generate all this? You know, where do you get your inspiration from and how does things work? So um, actually, there's no big secret. My, my inspiration comes from my curios curiosity since young. I, I also base my, my interest based on the five senses, sight, hearing, taste, touch, and smell. So I would just, it's, it's basically, how do, you, how do you relate a smell to a sight? Can you smell something before you see something? 
Or can you see something before you taste something? Or can you combine all the senses to portray something? So basically, that's, that's actually my formula. So within that, because I've been exposed, I also like to expose myself to different design and arts or anything that's creative. So whatever that I have input, subconsciously, I will join them together and create something new. You know? and, and again, as there's, there's nothing wrong with a wrong proposal. It's just that, are you there enough to make the first step and say that, this is what I propose. And then throw it to the big world and say, what do you guys think? Is this fun or is this good? I always tell my student, if whatever you do, you're not interested or you're not curious or there's no element of fun, it's not worth doing. Yeah. Still to come on Central News, pre-season training underway for the steamers and the Oscars of Clean Green. Welcome back. A Morrisville business with a strong sustainability philosophy and an emphasis on teamwork was recently successful at the Building Service Contractors Clean Sweep Awards. Anne Marie spoke with Grant Hooker from 24 7 Environmental Awards to find out what they won. Grant Hooker, welcome to Central News. You were recently successful at the Building Service Contractors Clean Sweep Awards. What are they? Uh, it's actually like the Oscars uh, for the cleaning companies. Um, when we uh, first originally got the Waitawa um, contract, they suggested we uh, join the Building Services Contractors Union. Uh, that's the setup. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, it's the first time in seven years that they've uh, run the awards. And so yeah, we. Uh, we thought we'd um, have a go because I think it's great recognition uh, for the uh, yeah for our team. Absolutely, and you won the uh, business excellence. Yep. Now, what was the criteria for the award? Uh, what was it? It's uh, for a million dollars um, and above. Mm -hmm. And there's there's many uh, things that you had to have health and safety, uh, not just uh, the how clean the plant was, mm. but there's a number of things that we had to meet. Uh, many things that had to meet uh, the criteria. So, yeah. So, yeah. I guess it had to be really clean. <laughs> yeah, well, when the judge came out, he did, yeah, he said it didn't come into it, but he was wandering his finger over a few things and he was checking things out. So, yeah, as I say, it was, yeah, our, my team, very good. Yeah, they've yes. done a really great, great job. And now, the actual award is in recognition for a particular uh, plant, the Waitoa plant. Tell me about that. That's what we put in for. So, yes. Okay, so it's the Greenfield plant. So it started from uh, Greenfield and uh, it's a UHD plant yes. and it's $120 million. And yeah, so we were lucky enough to, to start from the beginning. Uh, knew a few people and um, we were asked to, to start cleaning the toilets in Portaloos mm -hmm. and uh, through Eberts we, um, we, we picked up some more work and we cleaned it from the top to bottom from the start to the finish. And uh, we're still there today doing the, um, doing the contract clean. So yeah, we were very, very happy. That's fantastic. Mm. So you mentioned a judge came out. How was it judged? Uh, yeah, so they had uh, several judges. Um, there was an, uh, I was supposed to, Originally, be uh, had a date set up with a guy from Sydney, yes. and um, on the day that he was coming, um, no one would answer my phone at uh, the UHD plant. They were commissioning the plant at the time, because that's you know they they're getting pressure to, to run this uh, this thing. So, yeah, so we I actually pulled out and rang up the guy and said, look, we, I'm going to have to cancel. And I uh, said, look, he made such an effort. So they got another judge from Wellington, which I'm glad we got yeah. the second opportunity. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So it uh, went really well. So he came out and he talked to us. Um, and my uh, staff manager, Kira Wilkinson, she, uh, and it's, it's all the health and safety, the, the, uh, the procedures, yes. um, all that sort of st stuff comes into it. It's a big, it's a big, not just how clean it is, but that's a big part of it. Mm, mm. Yeah, so, um, no, yeah, they spent um, 10 minutes with one of the Ebert um, top guys there, and um, obviously he gave us a good reference. We've got some great references, and uh, yeah, but we've got a great team, so. Yeah. That's fantastic. Mm. So what does the win mean for your business? Oh, long activity maybe in <laughs> Ontario. Um, uh, more work, hopefully. Yes. Um, yeah, it's, um, I think again, it's just, we, we strive for excellence, and uh, we really work hard. Um, and uh, we, I've got some, I say, got some great team members. Um, I'm on board most of the time with them, which is a big part of the business. As I work alongside other guys, don't forget, uh, like uh, my wife Debbie, um, uh, behind the scenes in the office, Carol, uh, many um, people behind the scenes. As I say, the health and safety, the. Um, what do you call it? The, um, yeah. The the great human resources. Yeah, oh, you mm. just, yeah, and um, yeah, staff, managing staff, that's mm. a big part of it. 
Mm. Staff can make or, bake or break a business. Can't, oh, can't they can. They, they can. Yeah. They can. And uh, look, you know, look, we've just got some great staff, and uh, I think we help create that. Yes. Um, but um, I like to give praise as much as we can. We've we've employed some, you know, like I was coach of Kieran under nineteen, so it was my first pool of guys. Great. And and it was great. And um, yeah, actually, Jordan Watson's producer of. Um, what now? I think uh, yeah. no, no. Yes. Sorry, Ben. Um, yes. Yeah. And so yeah, he was. Yeah. He was. A worker he was one of the you. workers. Yeah. Um, we've got guys gone into farm, farming. There's guys have gone into Fonterra. Mm -hmm. We help. We promote guys to um, and girls to to move on. Um, one, one girl's gone to the navy. This we help people along. Mm -hmm. mm. Absolutely. Now, sustainability is quite important to you as, in the business yeah, as well, isn't it's it? It's huge. Tell me about that. Oh, you, you just. I think we strive. Um, it's easy to clean, clean and clean duty is one of our big sayings. Um, and if you can get those standards up on, on places, uh, mm. you try to work in with the teams as well, the, the sites and the different people, and it's great to get them involved. Um, it's not just doing their duty work all the time. It's mm. nice to just yeah, get in there and work with them and teach them. Um, I, I myself worked in Fonterra, uh, Anchor, mm. so you sort of know what the standards are mm. and you just got to get them there and, and, and yeah. Because it's about recycling, but I guess it's also about the products you use for environmental purposes. Yeah, as well. um, yeah, very careful what you use. Is they've all got to be approved. Yes. Um, nothing like hot water though, as well, and elbow yes. grease. Yes. You know, there's there's something that you can't replace. Uh, just getting stuck, and we do that with numbers, and um, going places that that uh, you can't get with machinery and um, extendable brooms. Um, yeah, the old one of the, the old yes, <laughs> yes, very much so. Yes, we you do use toothbrushes uh, into some areas, and that's how that's how clean it is nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, dairy it's industry is just it's, it does it does have to be. Yeah, it yeah. does have to be. I mean, look at the scare that yep. th that they've had and the yep. the global impact yep. and the reputation yep. even on New Zealand. Yep. Yep. It's resting no. on your shoulders, no pressure, mate. No, no. <laughs> Again, it's yeah, it's great to be involved, and and I've got I've, I've learned stuff, and, and I'm stalling stuff every day, mm. and just teaching stuff, and and yeah, it's just it's just it's good to be involved. Congratulations on your win, and all the very best for the future. Thank you very much. Coming up next, weather and pre-season training. Welcome back. There are 12 new faces on the Bay of Plenty steamers this season after the club competition, with seven of the 10 teams represented. The squad features 19 players returning from the 2013 team. I spoke with head coach Kevin Schuller to see what his plan is to integrate the new players and encourage team bonding. Yeah, I, th I think any team, um, and well, we've got about six, seven weeks to go. Um, so. The players have got a, a, a pretty important club finals and semi-finals coming up, but we'll be doing training with them as well. And so when we get together in our pre-season, you know, there's no substitute for hard work. So I talked earlier about, you know, this relentless mindset we need to have a team that just keeps playing and playing and playing. And we've got to push that and grain that into them on the training field, you know, in the build-up to the comp as well. So they're certainly working hard together is a great way to do that. Um, a guy like Red, who, who's been around the bay for a long time and is leading the group and, you know, very experienced guy. He knows the team and he knows team culture right through. Um, we've got some other boys, Dougie uh, Edwards. Um, he's been a bay man. He's been close to the bay for a few years, plays for Walker, big, another big, massive centre, 108 kilograms. Scary guy, but he's uh, he's got a lot of money and he's, he knows a lot about the culture and the region too. So we've got some good people that we're sure will help bring these new guys in and, and make them feel part of it. But hard work will be the key. So you're going to be doing a bit of team bonding exercises out there? Oh, there's always something. There's always something that you have to do. The, the players come up with something. We just sit back and watch that. Make sure there's no cameras. Do you have any secret weapons? Obviously you can't give away too much, but do you have any tucked away that you're going to bring out this season? We, we, we're pretty happy with how the Fords have come together and, and we were able to reward a lot of those boys that did so well for us last year. You know, Kane Hames has kicked on and had a fantastic year with the Highlanders. Um, you know, Nathan Harris is knocking on all black selections. So we we think we'll get some good, strong, you know, typical Bay aggressive, non-compromising, uncompromising footy up front. Um, last year we struggled to get the ball out to some of our exciting outside backs and we've got Tino Damani, he's in the best shape of his life. We want him running over people and running through people and scoring lots of tries. But we do have a, a we have picked a, a pretty big solid midfield, you know, and we're hoping that that's going to um, give us that real go forward and some real win, all these confrontations. A lot of tackles in a game of rugby and we want to come out on top, so it's great. 
Is the aim to get out of the championship and into the premiership? Yeah, we want to. We want to win. We want to win all our games. And you know, you know, we had a slip up last year and we came down. It's still a, it's still a great comp. They're both great competitions. But you know, the goal for us is home, home semi, home final, and um, we want to get back up there. But that'll just come from you know what we do. You know, right from the pre-season, just get this attitude of relentlessness, get into it, and get it on the paddock, and get excited about winning and representing the bay is the key. What's the training rating like pre-season? Yeah, well, hard. <laughs> yeah, that, we, we, we've had a good, you know, good uh, relationship with the, the clubs this year, and, and it's really important the players and the clubs and, and everyone you know we listen to they they want um, the top players playing in the semi-finals, the finals, and we were able to to work through with them so that we could create a window where we can get our pre-season and they can also get their end of season, so to speak. So, off the back of our best players playing in those semi-finals and finals and, and, and experiencing finals footy there, um, we'll, we'll be kicking into some pretty pretty rough stuff to, uh, to build us up to make sure that our fitness levels are right up where they need to be. To follow our boys and their upcoming games, visit boprugby.co.nz. The weather for Thursday now. Hamilton, high clouds, few spots of rain and a gusty northeasterly again. Your expected high is 15 and an overnight low of 10. The rest of the Waikato, rain at times about the Kaimai range and a few spots of rain elsewhere. Gusty northeasterlies, strong in exposed places. Please do take care out there. Pairoa, 16 and 10. Matamata, 14 and 12. Te Ao Mutu, 15 and 10. And Tokoroa, 13 and 8. Bay Plenty Tauranga, rain at times with a gusty northeasterly. Your expected high is 16 and an overnight low of 11. The rest of the Bay Plenty, a thick high cloud with rain at times in the west. Again, gusty easterlies. Topuki, your high is 14 and 11. Right, that is central news for today. Like us on Facebook and post us a comment to let us know if there is something you think should be addressed in your community. Alternatively, you can email us at news at tvcentral.co.nz. Coming up tomorrow night, the fight to get the youth interested in politics and why he beach gets a boost in the form of tourism. I'm Hilary Entwistle. I hope you have a lovely evening. For Media Production, a division of Television Media Group. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.